All right, folks, I'm here to show you another uh, weekly drawing. You know, it's been a little while since we've done one of these. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get one done this week. Make it a little extra special. I'm actually going to turn this into a painting. So let's kick it off with our supplies here. The first thing I have are my watercolor paints. This is a set of Koi watercolor paints. These are a student grade paint, uh, which means they're not terribly expensive. Any watercolors you can get your hands on will probably work about as well as these. I also have a palette for mixing up my paint and a paintbrush. Anything that's got a nice little tip there will work. I have my pencil to draw with, tape to tape my paper off, and I will, this is just washi tape. I'll show you exactly what we're going to do with this in just a second. And most importantly, I have special paper for this. Because I want to paint it, I am using watercolor paper. When you are painting, especially with watercolor, you can't use regular paper for it because the paper won't hold all the water that you have to use to make the paint work. So you need to buy something that's actually marked watercolor paper. It's a thicker paper. It usually has a little bit of texture, so it will hold that water. And when you're painting, your paper won't fall apart on you. You don't have to use this brand. There are tons out there that you can choose from. All right, let's get started. So before I even do my drawing, the first thing I want to do is actually make a border on my painting. And to do that, I'm going to take this washi tape and I'm going to tape off the edges here. It's important that you use something like washi tape or maybe a less sticky masking tape, because if you use tape that's too sticky, then it's going to stick too much to your paper and then it's going to tear your paper when you try to peel it off. So I found that washi tape works really well. Um, painter's tape works as well, although it's kind of big, so you might have to cut it down some. Yeah, I would never, ever, ever use scotch tape for this, like a clear tape. That's going to be too sticky. It won't do at all what you want it to do. Masking tape is also probably fine, but you might want to just stick it on your clothes or something a few times just to get a little bit of that stickiness off so it doesn't tear your paper when you peel it up. Washi tape is pretty cheap, you know, and it doesn't matter what it looks like because you're just using it to make your border. You could skip this step if you wanted to. It's not saying you have to have a border, but it gives you a really nice look when you're done. Another thing this does, which I don't need so much for this because my paper is actually glued on the side, but if you're using uh, just a regular sheet of watercolor paper, by taping it down, you'll keep your paper from bubbling up when you get it wet. It'll keep your paper much more flat as you work. All right. So I've got my paper taped off. Now I'm going to start on my drawing. So the first thing I'm going to do is switch over to look at my source image. I just looked up a picture of a rabbit on a website that has free pictures to use. So you don't have to worry about taking somebody's copyright. Um, these are images that are free for anybody to use so you can draw from them. Then I'm going to start my sketch. As with anything, you want to start with simple shapes. So I'm going to draw a rabbit today. And I'm going to start with the head, which is kind of like an egg shape. And the body, a very large circle. 
keep in mind your proportions. Remember, a proportion is the size of things in relationship to one another. So you know the body should be a lot bigger than the head. Here's our little feet. And of course, the charm of a bunny rabbit with the cute ears. And looking at my picture, those ears are about the same size as the head almost. So again, that's your proportion, keeping those the right size. From here, I'm just going to work in details like the nose, the little triangle, kind of round where the mouth is a bit. Don't forget the eye. Also, don't be afraid to erase things. Uh, just for a quick sketch of our rabbit, this should probably work. I'm also going to establish a horizon line. Remember, that's where the sky meets the ground. And that's just going to help it look like my rabbit's not floating up in the air. Next, I'm going to start my painting process. So I've got a series of colors here, and I think all of these should work just well for me. And I'm going to do the background first by taking a bit of this cobalt blue, this light blue here. Notice that I'm going to get it wet to activate it. And mix some of that up in my palette. You will need a cup of water for this one supply I didn't tell you. I've got a cup off to the side. Now, the more water you add, the lighter your color is going to be. I'm going to start with kind of a light color here. And I can paint right on top of that tape. If I taped it down well, it won't bleed underneath it. Now we're just going to paint in like a sky behind my little bunny rabbit here. The key to working with watercolor is you need to keep your brush very wet. You need to keep a lot of water on it. And that's what's going to make your paint move. Watercolor is a very transparent medium. That means you can see through it. So you might have to layer color a few times to get a really bright look if you're going for like a really bright color with your watercolors.
And notice I'm not too worried about it getting inside where my rabbit is. It's okay. What you can do is take a brush that's clean. Make sure you got clean brush with just water. And you can pick that right back out. You can also use a tissue to just kind of pull that up as well. Okay, so underneath my rabbit here, I'm going to do uh, like a grass. So I'll pull this viridian color. And because just looking at it, it looks a little too blue green. I'm going to take some of the yellow green next to it. I'm going to mix that in as well, just to give me a slightly brighter green. And same deal. When you are painting with watercolor, do make sure that you're not painting two wet areas next to each other, or else your paint will bleed. Watercolor is going to go anywhere that there is wet for it to go into. But because watercolor will move into any areas of wet, you can get a really cool look by doing a technique you call wet on wet. Which means if I take my wet paper, just kind of touch a little paint to it, look at how it just kind of spreads and moves on its own. You can kind of guide that a little bit. This is a really cool way to get some neat techniques with your watercolor by putting down some areas of wet and then putting some wet paint into it. Just kind of letting it see what it does, where it goes. Now that I've got my green in here, I feel like my blue is a little too light. So I'm going to add a little more of that blue, a little bit brighter color up here. And this technique is called a gradient because it is gradually getting lighter. Okay, so before I do my actual rabbit, what I need to do is let my paper dry. Because again, if I try to paint this right now while it's wet, then my paint's just going to kind of bleed everywhere. And I'll have you know, brown um, in my blue and green, and it'll be kind of a mess. So you need to let it dry. If you don't want to wait for it, you can grab a hair dryer 
and just run your hair dryer over it, which is exactly what I'm going to do. And we'll pick it up as soon as it's dry. Okay, before you move on to the next step, again, please make sure that your painting is dry. So if you kind of tap your finger on it, you should not be able to feel any wet areas. It shouldn't look shiny. And that's the way you know you're ready to move on. I'm going to start working on the rabbit itself. And my rabbit is kind of a brown color. So I'm going to start with my yellow ochre here. I want to go ahead and load up quite a lot of that. And I'm just going to come in and do an overall wash. A wash is a large area of black color. going to leave some areas white, especially around the eyes, maybe at the tips of the ears and the nose. Next thing I want to do, and I want to try to do this while my painting is still kind of wet, is take a darker color. In my case, I'm going to use this burnt sienna. And I'm going to start working in details. Looking for areas that would be darker, kind of starting from there. And again, I'm letting the watercolor do some work for me by using this wet on wet technique. I'm just letting it kind of flow wherever it wants to go. These colors will blend together very nicely that way.
Okay. At this point, we want to let our painting dry again so we can do some more of our fur detail. Okay, once again, please make sure that your painting is very dry before we move on to our next step. So I'm going to start by mixing that yellow ochre with some of this burnt sienna. And I'm going to use a very thin brush to do some details. I want to define the nose. And we're also going to do some fur textures. Now that I've got a pretty good texture started here, what I want to start doing is pushing some of the dark areas and really making those look dark. So if you look at my palette here, I've got a black, but I really don't want to use that because it's going to make the picture just look a little too dark. So when you're mixing colors and you want to find a darker color, Colors that are good to mix for shadows are usually going to be blue and purple. I don't have a purple in my set here, but I can use blue. And especially because this burnt sienna and that yellow ochre are kind of an orangey color, they'll kind of cancel each other out and make a really nice shadow color. And this will work a lot better than trying to mix something similar with black.
Okay. So at this point, I've darkened all of the areas that will make my rabbit really stand out. I've got a nice fur texture here. You could spend more time on this if you wanted, but we'll keep this one kind of simple. Remember with the art, a lot of times you can just suggest things and kind of convey the illusion of something without spending forever doing every single individual piece of fur on an animal or hair on a person. So do keep that in mind. Uh, I am going to use just a touch of black right here on the eye. Just a little bit. And again, you want to make sure that everything around this is very dry. Otherwise, this black is going to bleed right into your paint and make a huge mess. While I'm waiting for the face to dry, I'm going to add a little bit of shadow right underneath the rabbit because right now it sort of looks like it's just floating on this green grass. I really want to kind of give it a little bit of weight. So I'm going to take some more of my dark blue. I'm going to mix it in with my green. It's going to give me this nice shadow color for the grass. And we will add just a little bit of texture and shadow right underneath this rabbit. Now, again, I'm not going to paint every single blade of grass here, but you can do some texture to help suggest that. It'll just make it look a little more interesting. Right, the last thing I'm going to do to finish this up is work a little bit of white to use some highlights. So my watercolor set actually has a white in it. A lot of watercolor sets are not going to have white. You could use uh, white acrylic paint, white gouache paint. You could also use a white paint pen, something like this, uh, which is actually what I'm going to use today. Just because it gives me a nice bright color. These are easy to find, a white paint pen. So I'm going to start by adding some little highlights to the rabbit's eye. You want to make it look nice and shiny. And I'm also going to just draw with my paint pen. You could do this again with paint and a paintbrush just as well. Some really light fur kind of break up my texture.
this point, I'm going to go ahead and call my painting done. So once it's dry, I'm going to do the last step, which is going to be to peel this tape off. So again, if you're doing this, you need to make sure you've picked a tape that's not like super sticky. But another thing that will help you when you are peeling that off is to use your hair dryer, which you might have used to dry your painting. Uh, actually hit that tape with your hair dryer and get it really warm. And that'll kind of get rid of some of that stickiness and it'll make it easier to peel off. Now that I've got my tape so it's warm to the touch, I am going to go ahead and peel that off. Try to peel it a little bit at an angle, and hopefully it won't tear your paper up. You notice that it is. And we are all done. Um, my paper got just a little bit rough from the tape. If that's the case, you just try to kind of run your hand over it a little bit, sort of smooth that paper back down, and you'll be just fine. And there we are. As always, if you try this, I would love to see what you come up with. Thanks for watching, guys.